Well, I guess this is not so popular, this kind of topic, right? Yeah. Very technical. Yeah, but, but I, uh, I, I, um, I think the after views would be good. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize don't realize the um that they can do it and what it benefits so hopefully we'll we'll start um putting out this information and more and more people will, will realize what's going on um yeah i mean what we could do today is we could just do a, a calibration of your machine and if there's mm -hmm. still no one online then we'll, we could just call it a day and summarize that video so yep yeah um so um i i guess um uh, what we'll do today is we'll calibrate your machine, Dennis. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you need? So what you we need mean by calibrating? Um, calibrating, we mean with the puck simulators. So mm -hmm. I believe you have um, some simulators, the 0.2 and the 0.3 mm. Yeah, those are the can ones. You, can you tell me what's the difference? <laughs> when, when should I use 0.3? Okay. When should I use 0.2? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. And, uh, so, I never have an opportunity to ask John he sent me this set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, I believe today is a good, good day to really understand uh, why do they have a 0 0.3 yep. and why do they have 0 0.2? When should I use each one of these? In what yeah. scenario? That's yeah. correct. I mean, um, why do we have two? It's, it's um, really for the different um, flow rates according to the different style of espresso. So um, the numbers me uh, simply mean the uh, the diameter of the hole on the puck rig, uh, on the puck sim itself. Um, so I we see. can kind of see um, yeah. 2 ml, yeah. And we have mm -hmm. a 3 ml one that you're holding. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's just the, the actual size of the hole um inside in uh, that you can see there okay mm -hmm. so this has been uh, uh highly uh, engineered to be that um diameter and essentially mm -hmm. what this mimics is a perfect flow rate running at, at, at this here and i believe i think it's um 0 0.0 ml um a second at nine bar is what it's um, designed to do so this is mm -hmm. more for those um uh, ristretto type shots the really thick mm -hmm. Um, high body uh, uh, type shots, uh, more uh, on the shorter ratio. So maybe 1.8 uh, and below. Um, so these are, are, are for shots that um, if you're using uh, more darker rose type beans. Uh, and um, yeah, so if you like the darker rose type beans and your body is uh, much higher, uh, this is the puck, mm -hmm. rate, uh, the puck sim to use to simulate the best flow for okay. you. Okay, um, all right, I see. Now the other one is 0.3 mm. And 3, yeah. I believe that is up to one and a 1.8. Actually, I did jot it down. Actually, let me just have a look. Okay. Uh, yes, it's 1.6. 1.6 uh, uh, milliliters a second at nine bar. Okay. Okay. So that so now you're going into the medium medium light, um, mm. and um, you'll see that the accuracy at those flow rates will will be much more uh, apparent. Um, mm -hmm. Accuracy, what do I mean by that is, is essentially the, the, the information that is displayed on the graph. And um, so we're, we're quoting 1.6 at 9 bar, um, and that's why the 0 0.3 mm Puxim will be most accurate to test it. And okay. um, we'll go into, uh, into it a little bit deeper later on in terms of uh, why it's good to use the Puxims. Um, and we'll also explore some of the avenues that you don't actually need a puck sim to calibrate your machine. Um, specifically, you can use different skins or, or, or some user uh, created uh, programs that, that we'll discuss later on. Um, but okay. why is it good to use these puck sims um, rather than using a, a puck that is that you just tamp yourself and you're using mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, from shot to shot. Um, you mm -hmm. can actually use that data, but we suggest if you're really looking into calibrate uh, your your machine um, mm -hmm. to use this, um, especially oh. if you're leaning towards the more lighter roasts, um, because you are able to tailor what bars you want your DE one to be most accurate at, uh, mm -hmm. and specifically what flow rate. Um, mm -hmm. So an extreme example may be uh, the Rau Allonger profile. Okay, um, um, we are mostly most of us are aware that it's is using a very fast flow rate. Okay, mm -hmm. um, now let's say hypothetically you set your um, calibration to the zero point two mm, 
uh, mm -hmm. which is set for a lower flow rate, you will find that the accuracy of your data will not be as strong as, let's say, you use a, uh, a, a Chromina type profile, let's say, for example. Mm -hmm. um, because you use the point two and you calibrate your machine there, um, it is not expecting to be running at such high flow rates. So mm -hmm. the responsiveness and the uh, efficiency of the pumps uh, will be uh, not as accurate. Um, and we've seen differences around 30% accuracy on the, th on the flow rates at certain pressures. So mm -hmm. what does that mean in terms of your extractions? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, your Rao Langes, if you tuned it at that higher flow rate, uh, would be more um, clean. Uh, and we'll explore why it's more clean in a moment. But um, okay. let's go I back. Have this to, question, Paul. Yeah, sure. I have this question. Oh. How about, because right now I'm, I'm stuck in between, right? Yes. I serve my coffee with something like Ristretto, uh -huh. which is I need to use 0.2. Yep. And personally, I like to have my black coffee with a faster flow, one, point, yes. one to two or one to 2.5, something like this, lighter mm -hmm. rose, right? So how do I get in between right now? If I want to have my D1 be versatile, what should I do? Okay. Do I have um, a choice in between? We, um, we can look into that in a moment when we get some of the graphs from the uh, calibration profile. Um, but what we will see is um, as you are calibrating, um, you will notice that the, the, uh, the data, specifically the blue line, which is the flow rate on the graph, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. brown line when you connect a Bluetooth uh, scale, um, those lines in theory should match up very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Now the blue line is um, is an approximation um, and um, is using maths and algorithms from the DU1 app itself, uh, mm -hmm. and we say it's approximation because it does have a chance of error, um, okay. and and the errors you will see will be in a gap between uh, the blue line and the brown line, and it can be above the line above the blue line or below. It's just depending on your your voltage your machine is receiving. Um, mm -hmm. Now that we touch on voltage, though, um, I think it's very important to say that um, even though we calibrate each machine in the in the factory, um, we cannot anticipate the uh, the voltage your machine is receiving in your location. Um, and and I, I guess some people um, may not realize that um, each location, let's take, for example, uh, your next door neighbor. OK, yeah. um, your next door neighbor, even though they're on the same street, may have a slight variance in the in the voltage they receive. Uh, mm. And that is just due to, you know, physical properties of wires. Um, if they're mm -hmm. older, they're not able to carry the current and um, less so in this scenario. But the distance that you are between the power station and, and your your premises itself. So the longer you are, the less power you receive. Uh, and that's just, you know, the law of physics. And mm -hmm. um, we realize this when, you know, uh, users are now seeing the data in front of them and, and they question, you know, oh, why is my pumps not uh, pumping at eight mLs per second, for example. Um, mm -hmm. And then we realize that it is just the efficiency of the pumps running on the voltage that they are using. So okay. um, this calibration has come about to really hone in on um, what is expected of the pumps at a certain voltage. And now we can tune it to the voltage in your uh, premises to be more accurate as if we've just calibrated it out of the factory. Um, okay. and, and that's where we are at with this process. And, and it's really about fine tuning your machine um, bit like uh, how we said in milk last week, Dennis, um, yep. to basically get the machine to do as, you're, as you want it to do. Um, and that obviously leads into consistency and what not and what forth. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where we are with this. Um, mm -hmm. Where you're talking about um, how can I get in between, um, yeah. it's a case of identifying where your uh, flow rates are at the certain pressure. So um, let's say you're taking a normal nine bar um, profile and you mm -hmm. want your MLs to be on the higher side of 1.6. So let's say 1.8 mm -hmm. or maybe two MLs per second. Um, mm -hmm. You will want to have your accuracy of flow um, to be a little bit um, higher at that point. So your brown line will want to be a little bit higher than your blue line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, 
where have I found this information from? It's essentially from um, experimenting with the flow profiles um, that are set on the D1. Um, I mm -hmm. believe they are um, a flow profile for milk drinks and flow profile yep. for espresso. And mm -hmm. um, so it was, uh, I'll just give a bit of backstory. So I, I've set my machine to pretty much how you're describing, Dennis. And um, I found that the accuracy from one ml all the way up to two and a half is pretty yeah. accurate. Um, okay. But where I'm finding um, inaccuracies is, uh, I was just pulling a shot before. I don't know if I can pull this up and see if you can see it on here. Um, so if I move Sharing my screen down screen. a little bit. Sorry for the hand movement. So um, you, this is an actual flow profile I was pulling just before, and I actually just fine tuned my um, my machine to uh, uh, the flow rates I was mentioning before. So about oh. one to uh, one point one. Wow, the the green line is almost I can't even see the dotted line. Yes, yes. So I matched the. Yep. Um, so this is a flow profile. So th there is no um, pressure target on this one. It's mainly the dotted line is in the flow. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, you can see my brown line is very far away from my uh, blue line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this mm -hmm. is because the flow rate is actually at around uh, two, maybe a little bit more than two. And as mm -hmm. I said, I set it to just below two ml a second. Okay. Now, this inaccuracy is because of the way I've set my machine, all right? It's not um, anything due to uh, the profile, the beans, or my technique. Um, mm -hmm. It's simply I just wanted to match the pro uh, my machine to the profile I was experimenting with. Um, okay. Now, um, why was I doing that? Um, I, I, I touched upon it last week where I was saying I was experimenting with um, trying to find a flow rate that I was always trained with my eye to view. And I was seeing if I could mimic it back onto the DE1. And um, what I found was because my flow calibration was not um, in line with the real data that was coming out, i.e. the volume in cup, um, I found that it was very hard to fine tune and repeat what I wanted to do. Um, so even if you set your um, machine to a profile that you use, i.e. a specific flow rate, um, you will find when you move from profile to profile, if it is not within that range, um, you will see data that I've just shown you on, on, on this machine here. And um, I think it's very uh, useful to talk about the flow profiles um, mm -hmm. because um, most of the variables on a flow profile is if you have a good foundation of prep, let's, you know, we, we'll just presume that is good. Um, the main variable in the flow profiles is the grind setting. Okay. And um, why is it important when you're tuning your calibration of flow and how it affects your grind is that if you're, um, if you're setting, if your basic goal, your, your two lines aren't matching, okay, and your brown line is below the blue line, like in the example I just shown here, um, mm -hmm. you will find that you can actually change your grind setting when you make that adjustment. Okay, now how can I explain this logically is that if your flow is too high and it's not matching the output going into your cup, um, then the grounds inside the group head need to be more finer in, in terms of making more resistance um, at the pressures you are looking for. So if you change your grind, it will also change your pressure. And as we all know, if you change pressure, it will also change your flow rate. So this is why it's great um, to use this profile to tune in and, and understand the calibration because of the way it affects pressure. Uh, and then obviously in this instance, it also affects our shot. Um, mm -hmm. Now, let's say we've retuned our machine uh, and now found that the brown line is matching the blue line. Um, you will find that uh, your grind will be a little bit more coarser. Um, and, and this will obviously change the taste of your um, special shots and hopefully will be uh, more in line to making it easier to balance out your shots. So if it is you know, too sharp or too chocolatey, um, because your flow is more accurate, you can now fine tune it to where you want to be. Um, and that's 
that's a good point to really summarize what flow calibration is about. It's about mm -hmm. if you really know a profile or you really know a flow rate that works with your coffee um, and you want to repeat that in multiple locations or maybe in a different location in your home, um, mm -hmm. I would say the flow calibration would be a good tool for you to uh, really enhance your consistency. Um, and, and I think that's um, where it is. It's, it's, it's not about um, making your D1 better in overall. It's making your mm -hmm. D1 better for a certain uh, profile or a certain flow rate in terms of beans. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so um, that's the theory behind it. Um, you want to check out what I poured just now? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. That would be cool. So, okay, let me show it to you right now. Um, all right, uh, so the, here we go. Okay, and look at this. It is very this. similar with Crimena. Yeah, it's, uh, it's customized. I cut my personal customize it. Yeah. So right now it seems like that my dotted line is way too far away from the the green, and yeah. uh, the brown line is is a mess right now. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, because your brown line is, uh, I, uh -huh. your volume in cup line is lower than your blue line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what that means is that the flow needs to be increased uh, in order for there to be more volume into your cup. Okay? okay. So if we increase the flow, that means the alignment of the brown will move up closer to the blue. And in theory, from what I've just said, um, this will warrant your grind to be a little bit finer, okay? And mm -hmm. in your instance, if we do do the calibration and we find that, yes, we do need to increase your flow calibration, um, mm -hmm. what will this do to your quality in cup? Um, it'll, in theory, because you're now grinding finer, um, mm -hmm. your ability to draw out flavor um, at these pressures, at these bars, uh, will be better. So... Okay. It could be bad, it could be good, but the majority of what I've seen from calibrating machines is that you, you do increase your TDS slightly and is a, a possibility to increase your sweetness. Um, mm -hmm. But as we all know that as we increase TDS, um, there is also a possibility to, um, to basically draw out too much. Um, so as well as- Do you, you mean know, over extracted? Yes, yes, that is correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. Okay. So as well as you know it, it affecting your um, your grind, um, you also have to bear in mind that your extraction times with that profile will also change For because long. you're now changing your grind. Yeah. So everything ties in together, and that's why it's it's a little bit more um, um, complex in terms of understanding what you are changing and how it changes in your cup. Um, I think the DE1 does a very good job out of the box in, in, you know, in producing a shot that is, uh, a, a, you know, very acceptable and very good. Um, but to really sort of find those, uh, those shots that are, that you really chase, um, and to be able to repeat those shots. Um, I think this is, this is very key to, to, to finding that, uh, level of consistency that I think we, we can all say that we all want to strive for. Um, I mean, take this morning, I, I was, I was pulling a lot of shots on Friday night and, um, and I had a batch of coffee from the freezer and I was a bit worried that my, my settings would change and, and, you know, because I was using a, a different batch that was stored a little bit differently. Um, but you know, uh, just, you know, two, three shots in, I was already getting shots very similar to how I was pulling it on Friday night. And um, I, I was quite satisfied that, you know, I could pull that quality of shots, you know, the next day without having to change anything. Um, and, you know, I, I, I also put it on uh, the default profile, which it did require a, a, another grind change, but um, it was only very minor. Uh, and then I pulled the shot on the flow uh, just before we came on. Um, so it's 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 very interesting in that if you do have a few profiles that are um, similar in flow rates, um, there is minimal amount of change you need to do on the grind setting. 
It is more mm -hmm. if you're if you're really going from the extremes of you know uh, uh, maybe going over the two mLs uh, and then mm -hmm. going back down to you know a medium medium dark roast. Um, that's where you will find some some more uh, fiddly issues. But you know if you're if you do like that range of dark and 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 uh, light beans. Um, after the calibration, if you're not moving your DE1, you can make a mental note or just jot it down. And when you're switching or when you know you're, you're, you're using a different bean that make, wants a, a higher flow rate, uh, then you can mm. just go into the calibration menu and change it there. So, um, so yeah. So um, while I was talking about, you know, increasing the flow cal uh, and it, you know, making it a coarser grind, it gives you a cleaner shot. Uh, but it does reduce the body. Uh, and the opposite can be said for the other way around. So if you decrease your flow cal, it'll be a finer setting uh, and it'll increase your body and potential to increase sweetness, but also mm -hmm. for an over extracted shot. So um, those are the relationships that we see in flow calibration. And um, I think from the looks of your graph, Dennis, I think we'll be able to pull out um, more sweetness in your shots after a bit of fine tuning. Okay. And um, you should be able to uh, see a lot more consistency from shots to shots. All right, All right. so um, I, I, I've got to ask, which um, PubSim will you be wanting to use today, Dennis? Um, because I'm, I'm pulling more shots for milk coffee, I believe 0.2 will make more sense. Okay. Because zero point three, yeah. that will be my own preference for black coffee. Right. Yes. So, yes. But majority weekends, a uh, lot of students they prefer the white coffee, the milk coffee. So, okay. So we we'll just calibrate with this one. Sure. Sure. But first, what do I need? Do I need a do I need a Bluetooth scale? Do I need a um? Of course, I need a cup. Yep. Right. So that's so, right. Um. All we need is the Bluetooth scale connected up. Okay. Bluetooth scale. Yep. Ready. Um, a cup that will uh, is big enough to take on the uh, water that will be dispensed out from the pups in because there is a hole there and uh, water will be uh, jetted out in a, in, a, in a stream, very small stream. It looks like a very, you know, it's, it's smaller than a pinhole. So um, the water coming out will be coming uh, almost like a little spray. Uh -huh. So what do I do right now? Okay. Do I have to so, go to... Um, First thing first, uh, before you engage the puck sim, we want to make sure that the group head is as clean of grounds as possible. Um, okay, let me clean up first. Then. Yeah. So, <laughs> a lot of good, over here. so, so while, while you're doing that, I can explain why. Um, okay. Now, it, this is um, obviously there's a very small hole in the puck sim and all the water has to go through that hole. And it's kind of similar to the pour over basket where, you know, if you have grounds still left over in the group head, um, the, those grounds have the ability to come loose. Uh, and then to basically uh, uh, get stuck in the hole. So when you, if you do have grounds in there and it does get stuck in the hole, you will sort of see your, your stream sort of wiggle like this. Um, but then, you know, it's not that difficult to, to clean out. Um, I personally myself use a towel after a flush just to wipe away most of the grounds in there. And then I just use the back flush, uh, uh, the blind basket, just to, just to flush out any other grinds. Um, and then I test the puck sim to make sure I've got a good flow before I start the process. Um, okay. Yep. Okay, let me just um, clean up a little bit. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. Okay. If we've got a bit of time later, Dennis, I've got the prototype steam tip here as well. He's just walked away. Okay, so yeah, as with uh, most of our features, um, you know that we. This is part of why we have to demonstrate this. Um, this is one of the things that I found uh, is a little bit tedious in terms of making sure your group head is clean. And um, so, what Dennis is looking for is here: is it is there any um, brown coffee particles still stuck in his blind basket as he's flushing? And um, he's basically looking for clean water in there uh, before he starts. And um, 
But once this is done, you know, um, you won't need to do this again for the whole process uh, unless you're pulling a shot in between. Um, yeah. Okay, one more time, then we're done. Sure. Now, I, I, we did mention you can do this with real coffee and, and, and adjust as you go as you're pulling shots. Um, but I would say that I wouldn't really recommend it unless, you know, uh, you, you're very confident with your puck prep and, and you're, you know that your uh, puck preps are solid. Um, the, the test profile, um, well, if you're using with the shots, that's fine. You know, you're simply mat trying to match up the brown line with the blue line. And um, so if it is below the blue line, you want to increase your flow calibration. Uh, and if it is above the blue line, you want to decrease it. Um, now, it, it does have its benefits, though, when using real coffee to calibrate your um, your 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 machine in that you are already using the pressures that are that will be used uh, uh, when extraction um, and that's the difference between the uh, the flow calibration profile that is used in that it tests all the bars that, uh, that the machine can do so when we when we see the graph in a moment you will see uh, the graph the data being displayed on the graph almost like a like a staircase okay um, whether the blue line or, or brown line matches is is kind of irrelevant at this point but it, you will just kind of see steps okay and um, but when you're pulling a shot obviously you're getting very pressures depending on the stages you are at in the in the um, extraction. Um, but where you can really fine tune it is, is, you know, obviously, perhaps after the ramp up or during the ramp up that those pressures, you can kind of see how accurate it is um, to make sure that for that profile, at least uh, with a very decent put prep, um, you're, you're maximizing your, your, your machine's capabilities. And, um, but the added benefit of using the puck sims itself is that, um, you know, you're, you're, you've got a constant data um, mimicking the flow rate at, at 0.8 or at 1.6. Um, where you will have more benefits in using a real coffee is if you're perhaps chasing the higher flow rates of maybe like turbo shots when you're starting at two on and going all the way to three and a half. Um, I think you probably find much more beneficial using your real coffee there uh, and, and tuning it in. Um, and I'm really presuming that because you're using light roasts and, and probably using turbos because you are using light roasts um, that you're, you, you're perhaps using uh, tools and accessories that, that uh, enhance your puck integrity. Um, and, and that's quite important when you're calibrating your machine um, because if your puck integrity is not good enough, then the flow rate coming out of your puck will be inconsistency, inconsistent due to channeling or, 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 or whatnot. Um, so um, have, have we, um, are we all clean? Excellent. Yep. So just give it a test first, uh, Dennis, to see um, if, they, if you are experiencing any of the waviness. Um, from the water coming out, but if it is coming in as one long stream, then we're we're good mm -hmm. to go. So, what kind of preset should I use? What kind of ah, profile so should I use? The preset is called. Um, so, if we go to settings and presets, um, I believe it's not in the main list. So we have okay. to go into the eyeball. Eyeball done. Yeah, and it ends under T for test flow. Um, test flow. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, test flow calibration. Flow pressure. Yeah, test, test flow, flow calibration. That's the one. Okay. Okay. And then uh, when you go back into your main list, it should be right there. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Go back. Test pressure calibration. All right. Okay. Shall I start? Oh, I think you are on the wrong one, maybe. You want pressure. Oh, pressure. Oh, pressure. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Let me check again. Test low pressure leak um, yes. flow calibration. Yeah, okay, that's yeah, the yeah, one. That's got it. Yeah. Low calibration. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we we tested the um, puck sim to make sure it's doing a, a, a vertical flow. 
If not, then okay. we'll, we'll need to clean it again. Um, so I'll just start right now. Um, have we, uh, we, we tested the, um, the stream to make sure there's nothing blocking the hole. OK. Yeah, uh, just how use do I test flush. that? Make sure. Yeah, you can just use the flush. Flush? And, yeah. OK. Um, I've made this mistake before where I haven't tested it and I've started it. And then I realized that my, uh, my results won't be the same if I do it again. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a straight line. Cool. Yep, straight line. Excellent. Okay, so we mm -hmm. can um, start the test, Dennis. Okay. So as we mentioned before, this, this profile will test the, uh, the flow rates at different um, pressures. And the end result will be a graph uh, that looks like a, a, a step, steps going up. Yeah, the steps going up, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what's good about this profile as well is that it, 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 it runs through the whole bars without having to interfere. So, you know, if you're if you wanted to do something else while you're doing this then you can um mm -hmm. but it is it doesn't take that long i would say i think it only takes like two or three minutes uh, okay so I'm we sure can see the now is big enough um it's okay i mean <laughs> <laughs> maybe not maybe not but uh you flipping another cup halfway through <laughs> okay luckily the uh the decent scale is waterproof <laughs> okay <laughs> okay, let me get the second cup just to stand by first yeah, sure. before things happen. Oh, so Chris, you've got a good question in there. He says, um, does calibration impact 100% pressure profile like nine bar flat, no PI, um, or only flow-based components like PI and flow-based steps? Um, because uh, pressure and flow are very closely related, Christian, um, it will affect it to a certain extent. Um, now, where um, I would say to a certain extent is because most people will use a nine bar. And um, if let's say you, you do calibrate it to, uh, to be maximally, uh, to be the most accurate nine bar, um, you will see a slight difference, um, but not too much. And I think the slight difference, as we mentioned, would be in your grind setting. Um, but because it is, is just straight flat nine bar, uh, and you're not using a decline, for example, and things like that. Um, it won't be uh, this calibration won't affect your your current settings as much as it could do. Um, but yeah, um, you are correct with flow based components and and uh, with profiles that have varying pressures, it will affect it a lot more. Okay. All right. The shot is done. Cool. So if we could just go into your graph a little bit, Dennis. And we can uh, have a look at what uh, what has happened. So, okay, so we can see there's a lot of squiggling lines, and uh, obviously, with the yellow one is the puck resistance line, but we don't need to take too much attention to that. Um, the pressure is just obviously showing where the pressure was at that certain stage in the profile. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. it's kind of good that your machine has achieved all the pressures that we want. Um, it's mm -hmm. just nine bar that we can't see above because we have zoomed in, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, when looking at the brown line and the blue line, we can see that the brown line is consistently uh, below the blue line. So yep. this tells us that the flow calibration can be increased um to, because we want more flow coming out of the group head um as compared to its estimated flow um that is reading on the graph okay okay so so i shall um, go into the setting yep so we can go into the settings but before we do that dennis could we just see okay. if we could see the uh oh never mind that's okay <laughs> <laughs> um, i Sorry, just wanted sorry. to show christian the nine bar but it's okay um so the nine bar um are if if we did view the nine bar you would see the nine mm -hmm. bar 
uh, the blue line and the uh, brown line to be a little bit more distant compared to eight bar. Um, mm -hmm. And if you uh, were to cal recalibrate it, Christian, you will just want you will, if you're really just looking at the nine bar flat, you're really sort of looking at the eight and nine bar um, uh, sections to really maximize your machine. And um, so, yeah, so we can now go into the um, settings now, Dennis. And um, we can go into machine. machine. Yes, all right. And calibrate. Calibrate. OK. OK. And okay. we are looking at the flow times 1.0. So the third, okay. third item down. OK. Yep, this one. Yep. Yeah. So we are looking to increase this value. Into 1.5. Oh, no, sorry. We, we, we are looking to. Um, dec decrease the flow cal calibration. Sorry, not increase. That's my bad. <laughs> so I would start with um, 25. So go down to 75 and see how we go. Um, mm -hmm. I think this goes all the way down to uh, 0.5, I think, or, or maybe 0.4. I can't quite remember what it goes down to. Uh, but we have room to, to maneuver here. Um, okay. So once we press done, that will stick. Okay, very important to press done uh, and okay. Okay, and then we can run the profile straight away. We don't need to take it out or clean again. We can just run the profile straight away. All right. So I, I kind of got my um, wires a little bit confused there in saying that the calibration should have been increased, but in fact, it should have been decreased. Um, and the reason is that we want the approximated flow that is being calculated to be decreased so it matches the uh, volume in cup. Um, okay. Yeah. So we're trying to lower down the blue line. Yes. Is that what you mean? To match okay. down the, 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 what, the what is essentially being read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right now it's quite matching. Let mm -hmm. me show you. A nearer. Yeah, so it's much more accurate in the second stage when you're going up to two bar already. Okay, let me try. Okay. All right, just let it run. Yeah. Then we see the end result, yeah? That's right. Okay. It's quite close right now. Yes, close. I would say it's pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Compared to last shot, it's way too far behind. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is just um, calibrating of flow, right? So what yeah. if um, this shot is running and uh, the green line is not as much? Um, if the green line is not as matching, um, it, it's I would say it's um, probably more something to do with the machine. Um, okay. the, the, the reason why I say this is is the the puck sim is is almost acting like a, a blind porter filter at this point, but it is actually letting stuff out. Um, so let's say if this was a blind porter filter, um, it would still you would still see the pressures being reached. Um, but we wouldn't see any of the uh, brown line coming out. Um, mm -hmm. So um, uh, the, the blind portafill is very good in checking that you're checking to see if your machine is able to build pressure. Um, mm -hmm. um, and and so, so where we're going back to your point is that if we didn't see the green line, um, I would be a little bit concerned um, okay. at that point. And I would check the... with the blind. Yeah, I would check yeah, because... with the blind. Relevant with, uh, is that relevant with the gasket, the rubber gasket? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you would be looking at stuff like, um, you know, uh, if it wasn't coffee and using a blind porter filter and you're not reaching pressure, um, the first thing you would check would be your gasket um, to see if there's any leaks around the outside or, or you know, you're hearing any hissing at the start uh, or excessive hissing at the start. Um, so this was looking um, a lot better, Dennis. And we're mm -hmm. seeing uh, much more um, uh, tracing of the blue line with the brown line. Mm 
Okay. Um, so is this is zoomed in? Is this is correct, right? Yes, this is yeah, zoom in. Yeah, zoom so in. Um, if we zoom out one, I just want to see the uh, nine bar as well. Okay, we can see some of the uh, tracings at the bottom. Okay, and it does seem to appear, appear to be a little bit uh, less stable at nine bar. Okay, mm -hmm. that's to yep. be expected uh, from this um, from this uh, pro, uh, uh, testing I've seen. In general, the uh, weighting cup towards the end of the extractions, i.e., the last third, are less consistent with the blue lines. Okay, mm -hmm. now um, this is where we uh, say in the manual as well. Um, we really want to look at the last third of the extractions to fine tune. OK, mm -hmm. so if we um, just uh, pan out and have a look at the whole graph. OK, so if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are nine sections in total from the blue line. So if I'm sections, I mean the vertical vertical lines um, signifying yep. each one, of the two, uh, 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 bars. Right. So there mm -hmm. are nine sections here. So if we split that into uh, thirds, we will look at the points the last three segments. OK, so the last mm -hmm. three. Yeah, okay. that's right. So uh, the one just starting with the line just before the 100, that is essentially where you're really focusing on. And um, why do we focus on this is because if we look up, the pressure is at seven, eight, and nine. Uh, and that's where a majority of the profiles are um, extracting out. Uh, and it's kind of referring to what, what we were saying about um, if you were using a profile at certain bars, um, you will want to fine tune it um, um, at those portions. Um, but in general, you will just be looking at, you know, seven, eight, and nine. If you use uh, gentle and sweet, maybe you want to add on the extra six bar to have a look at that. But um, as we've discussed, the, the, the brown line and the blue line tracing up until the last third is usually quite accurate, as we can see. So in general, you won't really have to fiddle around with that too much. And it's kind of best just to stick with the last to, to uh, at last mm. third. Okay. Um, what should I? Is there any improvement that can be done? Yes, yes. I think there could be uh, a little bit more tuning that can be done. And um, if we go into now, what I would say at this point is, if we tune it finer, finer tune it now, um, mm. the higher flow rates that you will see for medium and medium light um, will be not as accurate. OK, um, but because we are using the 0.2 and we're fine tuning it for 0.8 and uh, probably a little bit above one ml a second, then this is perfect. OK, so we can kind of go in a little bit more and adjust. Um, I think 0.25 may be a little bit too much this time round, um, but let's try it and see what happens. Um, yeah. So take off another 0.25 and go to 0.5. And let's see how we go. Um, 0 0.8. Uh, so we want to go down to 0 0.5. So take another 0 0.25 off. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So, so uh, it will be 0 0.70? No, uh, 0 0.5. Oh, okay. Yeah. 0.5. Okay. Okay. Okay, wait, wait, so we're wait, just wait. taking off uh, 0 0.25, same, same amount as last time. Now, this has the possibility to go a little bit under. Um, but um, I think it's good to kind of stick with certain values and then fine tune as you've gone beyond that point. Um, because otherwise you, you've not got that point of reference of how much you've changed before. All right. Okay, so, so we can press okay uh, now and mm. okay here. Okay, throw away the water first. The Let me dump the water. Yep. Okay. All right, start again. Yep. Okay. So I think that'll be a good test in a moment, Dennis, to um, maybe pull a shot with a, uh, a low flow rate profile and pull a shot that is uh, using a higher flow rate profile uh, and see how the accuracy of your machine compares. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of presume that um, you, uh, a lot of your students like the uh, slower flow rates because they, they are mixing it with milk um, and, and they want those ristretto type shots to, to really pull through in the milk, but stay relatively yep. clean at the same time. Um, so this is uh, 
Oh, actually, I think we, this is looking very good. Mm. Physically, it makes no, visually, it, has, it looks the same. Yes. But on the chart, it's a uh, bit different. Yeah, you, 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 especially panned out, we won't see mm -hmm. the wiggliness um, as much. It will literally trace it a lot better. Um, obviously, when you zoom in, you can kind of see all the variances of the data from the graph mm -hmm. uh, coming mm -hmm. in. Um, but yeah, this is, I think we could go a little bit higher, but um, I would actually stay there and, and use it for a while and see if, if you find it beneficial. Um, there's a, I would say there's a massive improvement from before, Dennis. Um, I think we've probably increased your, your accuracy at this flow rate um, at least 10%, maybe 15%. Mm. Yeah, it's quite close right now. Yes, Very it's pretty close. The, it's still a little bit around. under, right? It's yeah. still a little bit yes. under. Just a little bit under. Yeah. Um, but um, do I you think, think we can go lower a little bit? Just like right yeah, now, you can. You can go lower, Dennis, for sure. Um, okay. So this is where it really counts, and we can really see now in the last third of the shot that, you know, it's only at nine bar that we're really seeing the wiggles, okay? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Done. Okay. I think this side, the, the last three columns, it's much more closer. Yes, yes. Around. Especially yeah. at uh, seven bar and eight bar, we can see a significant difference. There's almost no difference yeah. between, you know, the, 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 third, the middle portion of the, you know, the bars uh, compared to the seven and eight. It's only really so nine bar that we're really seeing any sort of difference at all now. Um, so all this is because I've changed, I calibrated the flow. Yes, and then that's it right. Changes, it changes the, the, the pressure as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're, we're fine tuning the approximation of the blue line. So um, yes, that's true. Um, I would say, yeah, you could probably say that's uh, there's a little bit of truth in there, Christian. So Christian is saying the wiggles are due to the water scale hitting harder at nine bar, uh, causing it to bounce. Mm. And uh, yeah, I would say there's some truth into that as well. And, mm. um, and, and that can be apparent with, you know, eight bars, there's still a little bit of wiggle, but it's still highly accurate. Uh, and as it's coming out at a higher pressure, yeah, we can account for those wiggles as, as it coming out and, and moving the uh, graph more. Um, mm. Yeah. That's a good observation, Christian. It's a very good observation. All right. So I think this so, is um, pretty good to go, uh, Dennis, unless yeah. you want to really try and, and um, fiddle it around with it. But um, what I would say is um, this is a good chance to introduce uh, one of the other methods that you could do. Um, so mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you don't have a puck rake, uh, not puck rake, sorry, a puck sim. Okay. And... Um, you, you, you notice now that because you've maybe watched a Zoom or you've seen someone else's uh, graph and you've seen that the blue line is, is much more accurate with the brown line compared to yours. Um, perhaps your graph was you know, similar to the graphs we, me and Dennis were showing and the brown line was below. Um, but um, where this helps now um, for all of us, um, uh, ooh, just bear me a sec. Um, I've just lost my train of thought, Dennis. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what was I talking about before I leading up to that? I just distracted. Um, <laughs> you were saying that without the puck sim, so let's say we are using a real yes. puck, a coffee puck, and how to simulate the, the, the real, just like the, the, the real puck sim. Yeah. So um, we've got some very clever users um, in our community. Um, one uh, named Damien, uh, you may know of him because he's okay. he created the Londinium profile, also the DSX skin. Um, he's um, implemented a plugin on his skin that will look into your shot history and uh, guide you uh, on the calibration of your flow rate. So it essentially helps analyze your graphs in your history 
um, to advise you on uh, what you should be changing your calibration to. Um, and I think that's fantastic, uh, you know, because it's, it's all within the app. It's, it's much more convenient for you. And you don't especially have to pull any uh, extra shots or do anything manually yourself. Um, if you're not used to the DXX skin or um, you, 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 you're looking for another alternative way, um, maybe because you use Visualizer, um, mm -hmm. there is another method as well in that you can, um, if you have a Visualizer account, it's very easy to set up, just sign up, email address, password, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go. Um, yep. But once you start uploading shots to Visualizer, um, you can copy and paste your URL, your website URL, and put it into a, a program that a very clever user has made. Um, what's his name? His name is Ed. Um, where is he? Where is he? I wrote it down. Uh, Ed Hewen. And he basically wrote a Python program, uh, which is a, 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 a programming language to calculate all this for you. Now, the only requirements are you need a graph with uh, a Bluetooth scale connected. Um, otherwise, um, the, the, the program won't work. You'll just come up with an error. Um, but um, you just copy and paste your um, visualizer URL, press go, mm -hmm. and it gives you a number. And you just have to times that number it gives you with the uh, multiplier in your, uh, in your app. So let's say, for example, it is uh, like your one now is 0 0.5. Um, we have to time 0 0.5 with the figure it gives us from that app. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay. and that's it. So it does all the clever calculations for you. Um, it even has a graph on there that, um, that you can have a look and change some of the parameters. Um, so you can really accurately adjust it to what you want it to be. And, um, and I, I used it the other day um, after, you know, changing it manually. And I also had a look at uh, Damien's skin as well, which is also very easy. Um, mm -hmm. But I like the, I, I use Visualize all the time. And I like the fact that I could just copy and paste it uh, in there. Um, perhaps if I use DXX skin more, um, I probably use the plugin DXX as well. Um, but I'm just loving the options of being able to, you know, either do it myself manually um, or put it in a program from a graph that I've got uh, and it'll tell it for me. Um, so, you know, it, it, if you really want to deep dive into it, get the Puck Sims and, and, and do what me and Dennis have just gone through. Um, but if you just want, you know, just to tune your machine so it is the best it can be, um, use the DXX plugin or use the program uh, that I've just mentioned. Now, um, I'll post in the, um, the chat room. Uh, oh, you the, are posting to the thread as well, the Zoom. Yeah, thread. I'll post it in the thread and I'll oh, post yeah, it in the no, chat room yeah. now um, with uh, the, the, the page for the Python program. Um, but everyone else has access to the skin. So if they want the skin version in the DXX, they can just go in the skin, uh, find the plugins from the uh, menu selection screen uh, and make mm -hmm. sure you click onto the uh, uh, flow calibration plugin. So I think Dennis is going to look in right now. So while I'm uh, going to find that uh, post, Dennis, you can uh, show everyone the DXX skin uh, and we can uh, do a double pronged attack. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, uh, DSX done. So already, okay, over here. Okay. So what else is it that you mentioned just now? Extension? Um, no, oh, so miscellaneous? Go into, uh, you That's the skin the, itself. Yeah, so it's actually in the skin itself. So that's okay. what's really cool about it. All right, so let me restart the app. And I only found this out um, doing research for this Zoom. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know, thank you, da Damien, because th th that skin, that plugin for that skin is amazing and it will help a lot of people as well as, well as Ed. Um, that that uh, I I've initially thought it was very complicated because when you mentioned Python in your thread, um, if anyone wants to read the thread as well, I think it's something like, um, I think the title is a new toy for calibrating flow calibration. Um, and you should be able to find it. Um, but um, he did write Python and there's a lot of code that you have to scroll down in the page, but you just scroll down to the bottom and there's two frames at the bottom and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just enter your URL uh, and click go and, and, and the next page will come up with your results. Okay, so I'm just finding the page for you now. Come on. 
back into the Zoom. All right, this is screen right now. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Still exploring on this. Okay, so I've just posted the uh, the little Python program that Ed created, and mm -hmm. um, it's on GitHub. Um, but yeah, if anyone you know is interested, they could just click on that now, uh, and they will see like a load of code. Um, so if I click on it now, go to my this website. Oh, error. Okay, I'm going to have to post that link uh, another time because that link doesn't work. Oh dear. Right, um, I'm not sure why that link didn't work. Um, I sent that to myself the other day thinking I'll just post that quickly. Um, but I will find that for everybody uh, and post it onto the, uh, the, the five minute, uh, the, the Zoom signing soon thread. Um, so everyone will know. Uh, and I'll also put in that link that, uh, that Ed put out um, with the uh, information that he created when, uh, when he was creating that program. Um, I think it was only created a few months ago and um, I, I completely missed it. So like I said, I, I've only found out about these extra methods um, this week. And um, yeah, my mind has been blown away because you know it's, it's, they've made it so easy. And um, I was like, oh, I, I wish I had that three, four months ago. Um, so, you know, you now have that option if you, if you really wanted to do it really quickly. Okay. So um, you want me to demonstrate with the DSX? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can see now if our manual calibration is, is uh -huh. agreeing with the plugin one. And um, I actually haven't used the, the Damien one. I've just checked it out. Um, the reason was I, I didn't have a scale in the kitchen staff, staff kitchen uh, DE ones. So I just mm -hmm. checked it out and, um, and thought it was very cool. So um, it is in the um, menu section. So if we go into the plugins menu section. Uh, the plugin menu section, which is skin or is it? Uh, cog. Go here. into the cog, yeah. Uh, and oh. Extension? Uh, I think there is another way. Um, so if we go onto the home, go back into the DXX. Uh, okay. and, um, if... There's this button over here. Yes, so go on the arrows, yeah. So uh, left and right of the arrows, yes. So now in the plugin yep. section, you can see there is one called... Uh, history. There should be one to flow. Okay, hold on, let me... Flow. You might need to update your uh, thing, though. Maybe you need to. Uh, this, oh, this no, no, there the it is. DXX flow check. There it is. DXX flow check at the bottom. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah it's that one. That's all? Yeah. And then okay. um, I guess what we do is we perhaps look, uh, press OK. And yeah, it should shut down and stuff. Yeah, I have to restart again, the app. Okay. So what I've read is that it, it uses the shop profiles in your history and um, it will guide you, uh, it will introduce a calibration uh, figure for you from there. All right, so it's now ready to go. Um, what should I do right now? Should I start? I would say um, pull a shot first, uh, unless you have shop uh, history files in there that have a scale, um, uh, no. scale data. I don't think I have, yeah. Okay. I just, uh, I just use this DSX for the first time. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm in a similar position. I'm not that familiar mm -hmm. with DXX, um, but I mm -hmm. did um, um, uh, get to the point where you are. Um, but um, from my knowledge, we need a shot, uh, a graph that has a, uh, uh, the, the Bluetooth scale data on it. Um, otherwise, okay. it can't calculate what we need to do. Okay, Sh should I just pull a real coffee right now? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. 
All right, just give me a second. No more Paksim, right? No more Paksim. Unless, oh, okay, Christian's cool. saying the shot files are shared between skins. So if you look into your history on the uh, DXX, you should be able to find some uh, shot histories from previous, unless you've not um, had your scale connected. The scale is connected um, from all the time. I'm not sure um, where they get the, the history. Uh, go for the arrows, yeah. Oh, okay. Should I just back up? No, I think that backs up your no, uh, system no. files, yeah. All right. This is the theme. Flow setup page. Copy setup. Steam by weight. That's all I have. Okay. Go back to the home page. Okay. And uh, click on the graph. Okay. Is there any setting for? I'm going to go into the skin myself, um, Dennis, and uh, have a look. Mm. Um, mm, nope, nothing. Okay. If we can't find it, I'll um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll have a look into it, and we'll we can we can do it again next week. Um, okay. Okay, so it's not there. In the meantime, I'll just pop crap a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Shot. Uh, meantime, yeah. pull a shot and then uh, we'll okay. get one, one okay. ready to go if not. I have to say the uh, DXX skin is pretty cool. I think I should uh, use it a little bit more. Okay, I think um, I'm going to have to look into that a bit more, um, but that's okay. Okay. Oh, someone's saying press on the upper left icon, Dennis. Upper left icon. This one is, is group steam tank. I'm not sure. Hmm. It's loading. Okay. Um, just while we're... Uh, 
fiddling around with the um, skin, um, I can take this opportunity to show the uh, prototype Steam one that I managed to pick up from the factory, Dennis. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So this is the one. And uh, we were describing it last week. And um, so this is the modified prototype Steam tip that we're currently um, experimenting with. And mm -hmm. it's a bit unusual in that the, all the holes are aligned in one horizontal line or vertical line, whichever way you put it. Um, we have a, a rather large hole in the middle and two small holes at either side. And um, so see. the two small holes at either side, I'll show you in a minute when I, when I put some steam through it, um, they are um, at a certain angle to help with the mm. swirl when you're swirling milk. And um, so what we're really looking to enhance with this steam tip is the uh, texturization point, uh, maximizing your swirl uh, RPM and uh, really folding and breaking those big bubbles into smaller bubbles. Mm. And okay. um, so I'll, once you pull the shot noticed, as well, Dennis. Uh, yep, send again. I, I, I noticed that um, the, the, the small pinholes, there's one is like it's not really circular. Am I seeing correctly? Yes, yes. So that's right. So if I, if I get it as close. One of those. Is, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Uh, it's like so it's like a yeah. slit. Yeah. Yes. Can't yeah. quite focus, but the bottom one is kind yeah. of focusing, right? It's like a little mm. slit. It's it's um you're very correct, and um the way the steam comes out when you when I when I show you in a minute, is instead mm. of like a, a tube of of steam coming out, it comes out like a like a beam like a flat plank of wood coming straight to your head right you know yeah, uh, yeah. and it's it's is designed like that so it, it it accelerates the swirl but also it's cleaving um uh, as much bubbles as it can with that uh with that horizontal sort of steam coming through um uh, mm -hmm. and uh yeah we can we can really see it in terms of the foam coming out um so what we're seeing is we're we are able to use a higher flow rate um at the moment with this one uh but the quality of the foam is 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 lasting longer so um so let's take for example last zoom where we were comparing a high flow rate with a low flow rate and how the quality of the foam compared um with the lower flow rate obviously it was uh, lasting a lot longer because there was less water involved uh and the higher flow rate one was um was you know the bubbles were were disintegrating a lot faster uh and we put this down to it's it's got an increased water content so the 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 integrity of the bubbles is not as strong um so what we're seeing with this is that we're able to uh steam at a higher flow rate and a high, more higher pressure uh and of course with more pressure we have more heat exchange um so the milk is steamed faster um, but we are able to elongate the texturization phase, basically destroying the bigger bubbles uh, into smaller bubbles with this uh, special design steam tip. And because it is um, steaming faster, um, we're incorporating less water in there. And that is why the uh, quality of the foam is, is much better. Um, so it's, it's very interesting uh, to see this one. Oops. Great. You okay. know what? I made a mistake over here. I What's just it? pressed. I, I pull short with uh, the test flow calibration. Something <laughs> <laughs> wrong is climbing That's up. All good. <laughs> the flow is climbing up. The pressure is climbing up. So I, uh, <laughs> then I noticed uh, I did wrong. I used the wrong one. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. All right. So um, I guess I'll try this steam tip, Dennis. Okay. Um, okay. Can Jordan you show me before? how it looks? How it looks like with the yeah. steam? Um, do you want me to do two, one with normal and one with the new one? Mm hmm Okay. And then um, we've had some people, um, obviously with the cleaning zooms as well, um, we've had some people message through asking about um, certain things that we've performed on camera. Um, due to, you know, it either not being shown on camera or they wanting more detail. And um, so this week I've picked out transport mode and obviously the prototype steam tip one. Um, I've had a few people asking about these this week. So um, while we've got time, I can show these as well. Um, so I'll just uh, give out to the 
transport mode, um, the question was, do I need to wait for transport mode to finish itself or do I need to stop it manually? Um, and it's a very good question in, 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 and why he asked this question was due to his concerns about um, preserving the motors on his, uh, on his DE1. Um, if you've ever experienced your machine not being able to prime properly, i.e. Um, your pumps at the start when you got it out of the box, they didn't they weren't able to pump in the water quickly enough and, and your, your motors were going at the high tone, um, you will uh, find that uh, transport mode, um, you, you will know that we will advise you that don't run your pumps for longer than three minutes. Um, but this is to essentially preserve your pumps and to prevent your pumps from uh, overworking itself and, and, and touch wood and not, not being able to function. Um, so um, it's not a, a great danger, but it's a danger that we, we, are, we do make people aware of. Um, but as long as you're not running your pumps dry, um, dry meaning it's pumping at the high tone for longer than two and a half, three minutes, um, you should be fine. Um, we recommend people when they are unsuccessful priming their motors to try two or three times. And after the third time, if you're still unsuccessful with getting water into your water pathways, then to contact us again uh, for further troubleshooting. Um, but it, all it needs is one drop of water for the, the pumps to really sort of suck through. Um, so as long as it's got that one drop of water, um, it should successfully uh, prime itself. Um, mispriming, mispriming motors, um, really not, not very common, um, but it does happen. And um, it, it happens because water does eventually evaporate. And if it's been in storage or has taken a long time to get to you, um, then uh, it will be, it will find it difficult to, to self prime. Okay. So the answer to the question is, as long as you hear the water uh, coming back into the return valve in the, in the, in the water tank uh, is dripping, you can go to eye level and have a look. Um, it will start to spit towards the end uh, and then just become a little drip. So when it's dripping and the motors are in high tone, you can turn it off. Um, there is a message on the, um, the transport mode saying to manually turn it off when you hear the mo motors at a high tone. Um, but you, know, you can confirm it visually by going down to eye level and having a look. Um, but yeah, so do turn it off manually. And um, if you are really wanting to make sure you got no water in there, uh, don't run it for longer than two, two and a half, three minutes. Okay. And uh, yeah, so just waiting out some coffee now. Um, I okay. think Christian's saying something about the um, David. Okay. I'm learning there. right now. Yeah, so yep. is, you can compare with the left and the right. So it has the dates over here. Okay, yes. Um, numbering, year, and then month, and date. Um, and then you can compare with the left and right. Fantastic. You know, you can compare whatever that from the left and then from the left and from the right. Well, today I learned new things. Yes. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I don't have to go through visualizer to really have a look at my previous history. Yeah, yeah. Short history, yeah. And I, 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 um, I believe this was one of the reasons why this was so popular in that it tied the history in as well. And, and, and obviously the, the skin is very, um, very functional when you know where things are. Um, mm -hmm. I've said this before. I think if, if I used it more, I think I would use it a lot more. Um, but due to troubleshooting, I'm, I'm, I'm most 8% of the time I'm on Insight. Um, I do use the other skins when I'm troubleshooting with the people. But... Mm -hmm. um, I like to keep my variables constant. So, and, and I find that the, the app updates quite regularly. So just to keep up with one, one skin and how it updates is, um, is, is more than enough sometimes. So um, it's not that I don't like the skin. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to pull a shot. Um, uh -huh. I'm just going to use this. Can, can I see how does the steam tip with, with you know, straight out and. Uh, ah, yes. Easily. 
So I'll just put the steam tip on now. I'm just going to put my camera back up so everyone can see what I'm doing. Um, So you have already installed the tip. Okay, so I'm just going to put the steam okay. tip on now. Um, okay. Just being careful not to push in the uh, tubing too much. Okay. Uh, okay, let me pull this shot. Now I'm going to go grab some milk. Paul, can you can you spray it out and show me how it looks like the new the new oh yeah how it looks like spray out yeah <coughs> how does the uh, the steam looks like yeah it might help if it was steam right <laughs> yeah. oh okay I see so basically it's triangular just like a skirt a dress it sprays like that. Do you see this, the, the two on yeah. the outside? It's yeah, I can, I can see it yeah, right now, clearly. I see. So it sprays like this. Yeah, it's almost like yeah, a, it sprays a like twisted this. novel at the start, right? The twist. Yeah. I see. So this way, it will just push everything sideways and uh, spins faster, I believe. Maybe if I put it to weather, you'll be able to see it a bit more. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's clear right now. Yeah. So yeah, it, it sprays this way. Triangular. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So let, let's let's check it out. The the swirl. The swirl. Yeah. Sure. The, okay. Yeah. Steaming. Yeah. The steaming. Now, um, I think I said this last week is that the major difference when I, when I moved to this steam tip is my jerk is more vertical um, mm. as opposed to uh, putting uh, deliberately putting an angle on the uh, steam uh, on the jerk. And mm. I'll, I'll show you with the jerk and what I mean in a moment. Um, mm. But that was uh, the reason for that is the swirl because of the way the, the, the nozzles work, it, it accelerates your swirl. So um, when we angle the steam jug, we essentially we're angling the steam jug to make the swirl more powerful, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, we use the momentum of the steam tip at the angle to, to accelerate the, the milk quicker. Um, so the technique here with the straightest uh, jug is that we find um, the, the wall of the jug is closer to the stream. So it has less time to accelerate before it hits the wall, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so usually I would, if I put the camera down here, okay. usually I would have it put in and maybe have an angle like this or like yeah. this. Yes. Okay? Yes. So you yes. can see the angle, this is straight, okay? Mm -hmm. And my angle would be like this normally, okay? Yep. So the, the milk level will be like this, okay? Yes. Right, rather mm -hmm. than rather than straight, right? Mm -hmm. But with the uh, the new steam tip, I find I have to even have this straight so it is vertical. Mm -hmm. 
and my jug is is also straight. Okay, yes, that means your jug is uh, flat bottom right now. You're yes, holding it flat, flat bottom, bottom. flat bottom. So yeah. it's actually just resting yeah. on my finger on top of the yeah. on top of the the drip tray. So it's actually very straight now. If I was putting my usual angle on it, I'm like this. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or if it's this way, I'm like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it is um, different in that I'm putting it straight, but then mm -hmm. when I'm angling it, it is mainly just for the swirl, actually. Uh, and, I'm, okay. and I angle it like this just to get that extra, sometimes the bubble gets stuck on the top, mm -hmm. and it's just so it, it catches them and folds it back in. So okay. actually it's almost the opposite, right? So because mm -hmm. normally I would have an angle, 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 then I'm straight. But for mm -hmm. this theme tip, I is, I'm straight, I'm straight, and then I'm angled. <laughs> it's a little bit different um okay. so uh let's pull this shot mm -hmm. um, i made an agrine adjustment before so it might not be right but let's just see how it is so uh before this paul you and i we were talking when you told me that uh even before you revealed it to me before that you sh you you um show the steam tip to me you yep. were talking about the concept of this so and i i believe i told you that uh, this remind me of uh, a very old school i believe it was seven eight years ago some very innovative um steam tip it's called katana yes yes and and it's built it's built for it. the the this product is just the tip itself so whenever I'm not really sure what kind of uh, um, it's compare compare compatible with what kind of brands I believe Lama Zoko and uh, some major brands mm -hmm. and um, it's basically it's it's a it's a it's a steam tip that it has one straight hole is like a number one so it's phrased very similar like that as well what you show me. Uh, but it's a very, uh, it was hype at the time. It was really hype and uh, it created a lot, so much of uh, attention. Yep. But unfortunately, um, it dies off um, like within a year. Nobody likes, oh, I'll try this or just forget about it. The reason why that I receive feedback, people saying that um, the foam separate from, from the milk um quicker huh? very quick yes it's just yeah. like a beer it's just like guinness stout it's just like a stout it's just a beer it uh -huh. separates almost immediately although it's it's for no brainer just uh hold whatever whichever way it is as so long that steam tip is just on the offside sideway facing yeah. on the sideway it will it will just magically uh steam perfect texture milk right right okay yeah yeah so um, Slightly different steam tip uh, compared to what you're having right now. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I think what we, uh, what this product was trying to achieve was, um, uh, as we mentioned earlier in, in mm -hmm. earlier conversations, that's that we're, we're trying to um, get people, uh, how to say, experience the level of milk that, that you and me have experienced before. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and, if when they experience that with with ease or with easier um, ways of doing it, um, mm -hmm. we'll find that the uh, the whole process of making coffee is much more enjoyable as an experience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we know that you know milk is needs to be honed; it needs to be practiced uh, mm -hmm. in order to stay on top of it. Um, but what can we do as a company to to help those people who who may not have that much time to practice or maybe are just starting out? And I, and I think yeah. the product will help a, a, a lot of people in that um, it helps in the the most difficult part of 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 um, in my opinion milk steaming is the texturization. Yeah. I think most mm. people can can hear a noise and and know that they're entering air in, um, mm -hmm. but I think. There are subtle movements, especially when when um, when when swirling and texturizing your milk. Um, mm -hmm. I guess what I'm referring to is when you have those those milk bubbles on the top of your surface, and you're swirling, 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 but those bubbles mm -hmm. don't disappear, right? They just seem to mm -hmm. stay on the top. Um, yep. 
I would say most good baristas or good milk baristas know that they, they need to make minute adjustments in order for, for those bubbles to be reintegrated and, and broken down into micro bubbles. Mm -hmm. And um, I think where a lot of people notice that is when they chirp well mm -hmm. and then they start to swirl and then they go, oh, okay, the half bit's over and then they relax. Uh, and then they don't continue to move the jug down very, very mm -hmm. tightly. And if you watch someone, it's very subtle, right? You, you actually don't see that movement of the moving down. It might mm -hmm. only just be them just sort of tilting it down straight or maybe mm -hmm. just in the motion of, of this, okay? It's very mm -hmm. subtle. Um, but that extra motion is, is, I would say, the difference between a well-textured milk and, and a, you know, milk that is, you know, acceptable and mm -hmm. you, you kind of know right when you when you you've got that foam that high micro quality foam you you put it in your mouth and you know you can kind of how to say sweetness yeah it's the sweetness yeah. but it's I, the, the, the mouthful and sweetness yeah, yeah. the texture yeah. the mouth feel you know you mm -hmm. could you could put it in your mouth like mouthwash and the foams would still be there right uh, mm -hmm. and that's what i mean like you you suck in that foam you go <laughs> mm -hmm. and then and the foam is still there in your mouth uh, and i think that's that's mm -hmm. what I mean but bad textured foam will not stay like that in your mouth uh, mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, de yeah definitely it will affect the taste of the coffee for milk especially yeah so, yeah but whatever i mentioned just now we were we were playing that katana tip in a boiling machine now I, I realized that the why the reason why it's um, it's separate super fast because it's not pinhole. Uh -huh. It's one big. It's like one straight line. Right. Yes. So it, it, it opens up a lot of wetness as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I can uh, um, uh, imagine. Yeah. That's, that's what I can uh, tell the the reason why it's separate super fast is because it's open too much uh, wetness to the uh, yeah, to the, to the milk, to the foam. So the, so the dryness of the steam as well, right? Yeah. Yes, the dryness of the steam, steam as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, you want to test it out right now? Yeah, we'll test it out. And I think that's yeah. a good point. Is that you know what I mentioned before as well that the, the higher steam flow rate is now more manageable with this steam tip because it's able okay. to pressurize the foam a bit better. We can we can go mm -hmm. a little bit harder and faster. And um, you know, Okay. okay, now I can see. Are you holding the camera or do you have uh, I've got a, an arm a, to hold your camera? I've got a new stand. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see. So it's pretty straight, flat bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think I had a bit of water coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the water go through my uh, steam one there. So you can see now that I now have my angle, right? Yep. Swirling, swirling. Mm. Okay. okay, so I've not knocked the jug yet. Okay. Not fit yet. Okay. So yeah. Two bubbles around the outside. Mm -hmm. Fit now. That's manageable. Okay. So okay. it's cool. got a machine. Wow, very nice. Okay. Very nice. Yep. And we found my other joke. I say I put a little bit too much foam off on this one, so I just poured the top layer off. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't think I would have been able to pour anything. So this is it again in the second jug. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty good, pretty shiny. Okay. 
That's four. Hmm, shiny. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty foamy. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So a bit weird because I, I I was the nudge yeah. button seemed to the see one that's uh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's oh, shiny. Right? I can yeah, I see some reflection from uh, from here of your you know ceiling lights. Okay, so if I shine my light over here. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Okay. So it's pretty shiny. Mm -hmm. And um it's not bad. I mean, I think what happened at the start, did you see at the start where my, my when yeah, I, there's I, uh, I integrate a yeah. lot of water. Um, so mm -hmm. note to self, uh, good to purge your steam on <laughs> before you start. Um, but yeah, the texture is good. I mean, it's still pretty watery, but I know it's pretty foamy. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of weird in that I know this will go really hard in a moment and the middle will still mm -hmm. be like a marshmallow. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the texture in the milk jug is still pretty good. So I don't know if you can see that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's fine, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. But the, um, this was at a, what flow rate was I? This was at a 0. 0.6 flow rate. Okay. Mm. Um, but did you notice um, when I was submerging and I was um, swirling? And I started uh -huh. to angle my jug, right? Um, uh -huh. I started to go this way, right? Um, uh -huh. Increased my flow rate, my pressure increased a bit. And because of the, the way that these air holes are, it really, uh -huh. you, you really have to um, catch the wave of it. You know, when it uh -huh. goes to the side, you, you almost have to catch the wave. Uh, uh -huh. But apart from that, that section, most of the stuff in terms of steaming is, is quite easy. I would say yeah. a lot of it does by itself. Um, I kind of wish I, I, I purged my steam wand at the start to really like let you have a look at how it starts. Um, yeah. But from my actual uh, position, I didn't actually move too much until I got to the point where I wanted to swirl. And that's when I wanted to, when, that's when I was moving. Okay, so yeah. I was chirping, 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 and then as I wanted to swirl, I was I moved it up a little bit, and then I was slowly going like this. Okay, uh -huh. and, and if it was from this side, it would be like this. Uh -huh. um, so I'm essentially trying to control that swirl um, to to basically get the the tip at the close uh, closer to the top as possible um, to reintegrate that uh, foam. Now. What, where I want to say is that the steam, because the steam tip is in a line, okay, uh -huh. I had the, the smallest hole facing me, okay? Uh -huh. So if I have the smallest hole facing me and I'm putting my jug this way, I'm essentially uh -huh. getting the, the swirl inside here to go like this, diagonal. And that, uh -huh. was, that was what I was trying to achieve. And that's the only bit you really need to sort of look into um, to really try and uh, reiterate those bubbles at the top. Um, so that's what the steam tip does. You don't have to do much at the start. It kind of does it for you. But when you want to really sort of swirl and really integrate it in, because the swirl is so good already, you want to take that edge off and move it so you get a diagonal swirl rather than a, and a horizontal swirl. Um, okay. That's where I found most effective. Um, but also the quality of the foam is really quite great. And um, yeah, I find with the, uh, this steam tip, the, f the bubbles from this coffee come from the outside, okay? And what do I mean by that is if we left this coffee for you know, a, a good while, we would see uh, the bubbles come from the outside rim rather than in the middle mm. or all over. Mm. So the outside mm -hmm. of the cup will die first um, before the middle. And um, I've almost never seen that anywhere. Um, and it's, it was quite surprising for me to see, um, see something like that. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you've ever experienced foam like that before, where all the bubbles come from the outside rather than, you know, uniformly everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just very surprised to see that. Mm.
I, I believe you, the, the new Steam tip, it's quite easy the way I imagine it. Um, my common sense is telling me it's very easy to do a ghost teaming. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say so. I would say yeah. so. Um, so what yeah. I would suggest is that the, currently our Steam one is not controllable. Let's say I want to Steam like 25 seconds, auto stop. Mm -hmm. Can't do that, right? Like 30 seconds, auto stop, no, right? Um, auto no, stop, I don't think, no, so. I don't think so. Oh, well, you do. You do have an auto off timer. Uh, towards the left-hand side. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. 120 oh, seconds. Yeah. Auto stop. We can do yeah. it. Um, but it's... Uh, with auto steam, I feel that we, we have to match a jug to the steam tip sometimes uh, yeah. with auto steam. Yeah. And um, I guess this is part in a progression towards that step. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I find it's it's... Auto steam depends on a lot on how much milk you're going to start off with. Uh, mm. Some people like to make two cups and they would probably use the bigger jug. Some people mm. use this one, but we can kind of already see the size difference and, you know, the level of milk you would put in is different. So, you know, just from here, if you put your milk here in this bit, as compared to over here where yep. my, uh, ring finger is, you know, that's mm. the difference of uh, maybe two centimeters at most. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, you have to ensure that your ghost steaming will is able to do at multiple levels. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, my I find it quite successful ghost steaming. Well, half ghost steaming is that I I, I do the start myself, like mm -hmm. I put it down and um, just let it swirl. Yeah, so like I put it down here and uh, I, I let it let it swirl. And then mm -hmm. uh, let it stretch, sorry. And then as it's going, as the milk is expanding, I will either move it up a little bit and move the jug like this. And then, mm. and I find that's the, the, the best way I've get, got really good texture milk is I let the stretch do itself. I move it forward a little bit and ease it up a little bit. And that's just to, just to give that extra texturization a, a, a bit of a head start. Um, otherwise you're really relying on that texturization of the steam one at the same level. Um, which yep. we discussed is, you know, it, it kind of needs to go up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I find ghost I would like to test it out. Yeah, 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 of course. Tell John I'd like to test it out. <laughs> I'll see. I'll, <laughs> um, I, I told you if I would take this back uh, this weekend to test out. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll see if we can get some, some out to you then. Uh, yep. And, and yeah. Yeah, give you some, uh, you know, some honest feedback. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I believe it's a very nice uh, based on my observation on the, the steam spread. Yeah, like yeah. That. It's very yeah. easy to, to help uh, out the newbies to. I, I have no doubt that uh, you'll be able to get some great results from it, Dennis. Uh, mm -hmm. And where, like, my, where I steam milk, I would say my weakest point is the chirping. So to find a steam tip that helps with the texturization, you know, hiding my, my, my flaws of in chirping uh, yeah. is fantastic. So um, I was quite excited to see something like this. Um, yeah, I think I find it helps me. Um, where I, where it would help you, I would say cappuccinos, where you got a thicker foam. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you probably achieve more microfoams, and it would be more fluid for you rather than a thicker foam. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I, I can totally see this uh, being a, a part of people's regular routines, um, especially if they're... Um, actually, I would say the pro users, because they have less power in their machines, this would actually help them uh, create better texture foam. Uh, Does this work with uh, powerful enough for Pro and Excel version? Yeah, I would say so. As long as you know we're, we're getting over one bar, one and a half bar. When we reach two bar, that's when it really kicks kicks ass. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, sometimes when I steam on a Pro, I feel like I just need that extra bit of oomph to get those micro bubbles going down. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that this would help solve the problem. Um, I think in the past I've been re introducing people with the three hole steam tip, but um, yeah. it reduces their power a little bit on that point, on that front. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I think that helps. The you know, three hole tips helps with the texturization for sure. Uh, but yeah. I think it would be uh, a, an extra little cherry on the top uh, yeah. when it comes out. 
if if we do release it. I think it needs a little bit more work yet, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Does this have any new like? Does this have any code name or you know like our temper version one point four? I don't know. Uh, like D one one point four three. It's just called prototype. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it hasn't even got a name yet. Um, I, like I know. XL Steam One, you know, Pro Steam One. Pro, it'd probably be the V1 because this is the first version of it, right? So um, the decent, decent tip V1. There we go. We, we've just coined the name. <laughs> yeah, I think we you, you. I think we should name this so that we know. <laughs> yes, particular I SKU that uh, we know what we're talking about, right? Yes, that's very true. Mm, yeah, so give it a name and some uh, katana, or some knife or some name. <laughs> the first time I saw it, it reminded me of like, I don't know, some, something out of Star Wars, you know. I don't know. Orion Belt or something. You know, like, you know? Actually, yeah, like the Millennium Falcon little cockpit bit, you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking uh, about. <laughs> Yeah, definitely give it a good name so that uh, we it will, we will confuse that uh, we have single hole, yeah, uh, three yeah. holes, and uh, this as well as three holes, but not really sure which version we are referring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Christian just asking, will this even work on a Pro XL having small heaters? Yes, it will. Um, it certainly will. And and I and I just said something before about the Pro. I think it will benefit the Pro in that uh, mm -hmm. we'll get a more powerful swirl. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's doing its job and it's enhancing that stage of texturizing and breaking down those bubbles. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, th I think it would work with the pro. Um, I think it would be an extra benefit. Um, right. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're coming towards the end now. Um, so we'll wrap up. Yeah, I'll take this time to summarize. And um, I think we'll do this um, on a regular basis now, Dennis. We'll summarize at the end and then we can cut that out and then we'll take something okay. interesting from the video uh, cool. and we'll post that out. I think it was quite okay. successful. Uh, I don't know if you saw, Dennis, on Friday, we released mm -hmm. the last week's Zoom and we also released a 20-minute version as well that uh, gave a short brief. The highlights? Yeah, pretty much the highlights. And if anyone mm -hmm. is interested from there, they can watch the whole Zoom. Uh, okay. We're trying to make you all guys happy, uh, okay. but obviously it does uh, take a little bit more work, but that's fine. Um, as long as you guys find value in this, that's 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 what it's about. So, uh, so the summary for today is we work through um, how to use flow calibration with the Puck Sims, and we gave a live demonstration of it. Um, what you need to change and what you need to identify. So you need to identify the, uh, the blue line, which is the flow rate, and the brown line, which is the data from a connected Bluetooth, so uh, Bluetooth scale. And if the brown line is below the blue line, you need to increase your flow calibration. And if it is uh, above your blue line, you need to decrease your flow calibration. Um, how this will affect your uh, quality in cup. Um, let's say you needed to um, increase your flow calibration. You will find um, you may have to change your grind setting to a more finer grind setting. And this will exhibit in your cup um, either more sweetness, more complexity, or um, could even make your shots a little bit over extracted. Okay. Um, but that obviously you will just fine tune again uh, with your uh, profile. And, um, but um, if let's say, for example, your flow calibration was decreased, then you will find you will have to go a bit coarser and your shots will taste a bit cleaner uh, and a bit brighter. Um, but um, what we've concluded is that if you want to, uh, it, well, if you know that you like a certain profile at a certain flow rate, um, you can use the Puck Sims to calibrate and fine tune your D1 uh, to those flow rates. Um, why you need to do that is, is just because of the voltage your machine is receiving in your location. Um, it's very possible that it could be different compared to our factory. Uh, mm -hmm. So this recalibration will essentially uh, make the approximated flow rate uh, more in line with what is coming out in terms of volume in cup. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we also touched upon transport mode in uh, what you should look out for. Yes, you should manually turn off the transport mode when you hear your, uh, your, your pumps fire at the higher tone and try not to let it run for longer than two and a half, three minutes. Um, we also ran through the prototype steam wand in this round because I forgot last week. So use mm -hmm. the time to uh, show you guys again this week. Um, we also steam some coffee. And uh, so this is a good time to look at the coffee, Dennis. So, oh, OK. I did it right, right? Summary. So we discussed how the foam uh, from the steam tip and the foam. Since how long is this? Like more than 15 minutes? I would say eight to 10 minutes, I think. So, okay. Okay. All right. so, you know, this isn't, uh, we made this about eight, let's just call it 10 minutes, okay? And uh, um, the, we mentioned that the main thing that I noticed difference from the three holes hip to the new prototype one um, is that the foam will last um, all the way, um, but will only disintegrate around the edges. Mm. You can kind of see that okay. the foam is great. There's a ring. Time. Right. Okay. It's not shiny anymore, but it's matted. But you can still mm -hmm. see the art and the foam. All the bubbles are congregating around the edge and getting bigger. Um, if mm -hmm. you it's longer, um, these will get bigger around the outside, and all mm -hmm. that will be left will be the white. Um, it's very okay. strange. Um, so you'll be able to see the white. There will be a little bit of foam left on the white, but all the all the foam that was mixed with the crema will disappear, and these bubbles mm -hmm. on the outside will also get bigger. Um, mm -hmm. so it's actually quite a strange to see a coffee like that, um, especially when we're used to really seeing them die after 10 minutes and not looking mm -hmm. really presentable. Um, so that's um, a confirmation of what we've seen with the new prototype Steam Wand. And mm -hmm. um, I would say that's pretty good um, evidence towards it really maximizing the texturization. And um, yeah, I would say it's, it, it is an improvement in terms of presentation and, and, and quality of the foam that you're getting out. Yeah. And um, so we also discussed um, DXX skin and how you can use the plugin there. Um, unfortunately, we need to do a little bit more homework because uh, we're not as familiar with that skin. So I think we'll go through it again next week. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, see if we can calibrate and see if that calibration we did manually with the Puck Sims uh, matches what is coming out of the uh, plugin from the DXX skin. And finally, we talked about the bars and why it's good to use the Puck Sims. Um, it's good to use the Puck Sims because um, you're essentially creating a constant variable, i.e., a constant flow rate coming out at certain bars. Um, mm. We mentioned that you can use regular coffee pucks to do it on a normal profile and you would just adjust there. Um, but there is a danger if your puck prep is not um, good enough or is not as channeling. Simple, yes, you will get channeling and your tuning will uh, suffer for it. So um, that's what we've covered in this Zoom. Um, if you do feel like uh, you want to find out more, please feel free to watch the entire Zoom or skip to the relevant um, part. Um, but it's, uh, it's been a good one, this one. And we've gone through a lot of stuff. And um, thank you, Dennis, again, for helping me demonstrate this. Um, uh, hopefully, your machine will be much better now. And hopefully, yeah. you can taste it in your shots. And yeah. um, I'll, I'll uh, catch up about it next week, yeah? <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks, All Paul. Right. Thanks very much. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.